well, better late than never. We are back live with you from the convention center here in the beautiful city of San Juan in Puerto Rico. And it's match number two on day one of the CSI Predator US Pro Billiard Series. With me in the booth is the legend, well, I've been looking forward to saying these words for some time now, two years almost, it's the legend, Jim White. Hi, Jim. Yeah, that and uh, about $3 American gets me a cup of coffee here. <laughs> <laughs> and that, and, but it is, uh, I mean, yeah, welcome. And, and thank you very much for the kind words, Mark. But what a pleasure to be here in San Juan and, and you know, seeing world-class players in, in a beautiful environment, as nice as one I've ever seen, and uh, in, in a very hospitable country, it has to be said. Oh, it's just amazing, and you know, you just mentioned the venue, and it, it honestly is at the top of my list. I mean, I've been to many snooker events, as you have in your career, and lots of pool venues as well, and this ranks right up there, and a fascinating matchup for you between Amalia Matas from Spain and Rubelin Armit from the Philippines. Uh, two races to four, as always, in this particular format. And if it goes 1-1, one, one, we will have a shootout. Now, we haven't had one yet on either of the TV tables, but I'm sure we're going to see a few, Jim. Well, I've been warned about these, and I've never experienced one, so I can't wait, and I get pretty excited to begin with. And I've been told that our uh, our colleague, Marcus Shamat, is uh, we've got to really put the blinders on him when that, uh, when that comes forward. Yeah, we need to gag him <laughs> if, it goes to a, if it goes to a shootout. Marcus is... Uh, well, he's very vocal, shall we say. So how's this looking for us then, Jim? Well, you know something, I was, I was talking to you just prior to us uh, coming on air, a few technical glitches, and we do apologize. But um, don't know a lot about the ladies. I know that you've got a lot more experience in commentating and, and getting to know the ladies. And yeah. Rubelin at the table now, slight favorite in your mind, Mark? I think you would say slight favorite she's been a world champion of course she was world 10 ball champion held that title for an unbelievable 10 years i think it was because it wasn't played recently lost that title in austria and uh chow of course who i was just commentating on on the other match who just lost to amber chen as well so yeah you know i actually had the pleasure of playing a scotch doubles against rubelin the other night Rubelin and uh, Sente was playing me and Tony Robles and I'm not going to tell you the score now do you like nudging into the 7-10 here well Jim if, if she doesn't she's only going to be able to bank that seven so she's got a chance and she's sacrificing position to the five and taking the chance to open that seven up so this is personal preference just how she sees the table yeah and she's opting to leave the seven alone so the big shot is going to come from the five to the to the six because she's going to need the angle on that six to either open that seven up or leave that cue ball in a position where she can attack and play an aggressive bank on that seven. So we'll see how she plays this. How's that angle looking, Jim? It looks good, Mark. Looks real good. She's going to be able to get that cue ball. She's looking at it right now off that bottom cushion. She can dislodge that seven. Be leaving it to luck a little bit here. But she's got a chance to open it up. Oh, pardon me. Now she's going to pay the 10 combo, Jim. Well, this doesn't look set to me. Well, obviously, she's got a little different look at it. And if there's space between that seven and the 10, she may be able to manufacture the angle to get that 10 into that top right corner, but certainly far from set. It's wide, it's gone wide. Well, she put everything into that. Little surprise that she elected to play that. Um, she had the angle, she could have opened that seven, she could have played down and played a bank on the seven. She took a very low percentage combination and Obviously, she's, she's somewhat got away with it because she hasn't left anything easy on the seven for Amelia either, but that, that 10 never threatened the top corner. 
No, it was very wide of the mark, wasn't it? So, well, I wouldn't say this is a, a great chance, especially uh, this uh, is the 8 9 Caramon, maybe. If she can cut this 7 in, uh, I nearly called you Tony then. <laughs> Jimmy? <laughs> I'm not that much of a gentleman than our colleague Tony Robles. We'll have him in the commentary box this week as well, and what a pleasure that'll be. One of the real nice guys in the world of pool. Yeah, he's, oh, that's a nice cut into the, the side pocket there for the young Spaniard. And there's a real influx. It's almost like the Spanish Armada here this week. Jim? <laughs> yeah, you were saying, you know, how well represented is Spain. I saw David Alcady and we knew Sanchez is here, world number one. And look at this, she's going for the nine. It's gonna be a very thin clip on the eight to try and park that nine into the corner pocket. Fraught with danger, Mark. Yeah, wasn't easy, was it? Even, it didn't even look as if it was on to me, Jim. There's the lovely arena. Really, I'm impressed with this venue, Jim. I know I'm going to keep going on about it, but it really is amazing. 30 plus years of traveling around the world doing events for me, and this is as nice as I've seen. Well, that's high praise indeed. I mean, Karim and his team with Predator and having Ozzy Reynolds and CSI involved. I mean, these guys have really raised the bar. Just spectacular in every aspect. Yeah, it's lovely to see the the league players playing alongside the pros on the little seven-foot bar box tables. Well, this was a risky shot to play. Was she trying to get over behind the 10? Surely not. Well, she's smiling beneath that mask. You could see her eyes. So she's left a chance at the 8-9. And uh, Amelia staying at the table. Should she park this nine into that corner pocket? And you'd expect her to get it. And get it, she does. Yeah, left-handed, very talented. I always think left-handed players have got that something little extra. And you've got two of them in the booth for this one as well. Jim's a lefty, I'm a lefty. Amali is a lefty. It's only because I couldn't find a right-handed cue. Well, you'd think I was playing with a right-handed cue if you saw me play, Jim. So, elected for the safety. Now, this bank looks on to me, Jim. It's probably as good as any because the safety's difficult. And I half expected Amelia to try and bank that eight. A lot of the men would have. But again, maybe it's key to success with her game is playing within herself. Yeah, first rack as well, deciding on the safety. So important, these short races, you know, to get off to a good start. It gives you the break. It is winner breaks, of course, as well. Boy, that was, uh, that was a very impressive shot that Rubelin just played there. She checked that cue ball, to kill it, keep it down table, and the speed was judged almost to perfection on that eight. And she's got Amelia in a bit of trouble. Yeah, quick up off the shot. How's the pace? Wants Willing it, it on. Yeah, it's not going to make it. It's a brand new cloth. They're very, very quick. But not if you underhit them. Well, Rubelin has bought herself the chance from her good safety. We'll see if she can capitalize. Eight and nine, eight and ten, sorry, required. And again, slow spin yeah. over distance. Dragged it, great, great shot. Very well judged. She's come here to play. Filipinos are born with cues in their hands and Rubelin Amet secures the first rack and off the mark here in Puerto Rico, one nil. And then again, a slow spin on that cue ball, judging that deflection perfectly. You know, I always describe these Filipinos. That they've got like a built-in sat-nav in their brains for a pool table. You know, they just seem to know 
the, the lines so well, Jim. And also when they're, you know, escaping from snookers or snookers, as you <laughs> go and say it for me. <laughs> as our Canadians would say, <laughs> a snooker player. Yes, there it is. Yeah, you know, they just seem to have that knack. You know, it's it's funny and I allude to it so often. I talk about the Philippine mentality and it, it's really geared for success playing this game because they just don't carry any baggage, no negative thoughts. They play, they win, they lose. Sometimes you can't tell the difference when you see them. And, and I could recount so many instances and it looks like Rubelin is almost the same. They just, they love to be here and it, it's almost like a bonus. Win, lose, of course they're as competitive as you could imagine. But nice they break. just don't carry any, any negative thoughts. They live in the present. And that's almost always a key to success in this game. Yeah. Played a nice cut break there. Made the one in the side. And a nice shot of the two as well by the looks of it. Uh, early. Oh, no. It, does it go? Does that sneak past the four? I think it might do. If it does, she can get back. No, it doesn't. So deciding on the safety. So she's beginning to just get the upper hand in this match in the early stages, Jim. Yeah, oh, she had look. a little. She had a look to see if she had found cover, and in fact, she hasn't. But I mean, the seven is blocking the path to the corner pocket for the two. So, I wonder if Amelia is just going to opt for safety here. Yeah, nice and thin. Take the cue ball down behind the four. Oh, she's caught the point. Oh. Oh, she's left it. Well, Rubelin's going to have to show us a little cue power. She's going to get that cue ball back down for the three from here. Error in judgment on two sides. Certainly didn't want that two near the corner pocket, no matter what. Look out, look out. tracking near that corner but she's on the three just a little closer to that corner pocket than she might have liked but it was always in the equation wasn't it yeah, she certainly gave that some really got through the ball little bump on the eight here what does she do about the six ten though she's gonna have to move it Jim at some point well she's thinking three shots ahead so is she going to try and leave angle on that five to dislodge the six? Well, she's got the angle. It's perfect. So where do you want to hit this, Jim? Do you want to s catch the ten ball full almost? Just draw into it. She'd almost have to be unlucky not to drop on it because the cue ball and the six are going to be in the same quadrant of the table. So this is just about judging the contact from the five to the six. Won't be played too hard. There you go. Yeah. Nicely played. Well With judged. With control, and she's got plenty of angle. That cue ball is going to be tracking up towards the seven now, too. So very nicely played from Rubel in the mitt there. Yeah, that little bump on the nine as well just held the cue ball for the cut into this corner pocket. Chance to double the lead here. Oh, nice swinging it round. There's that sat nav switched on to the seven. She looks very composed too. I mean, if she's nervous at all, she's not displaying it. Nice angle, she can be able to hold for position on the nine to the same pocket. Are you gonna use the rail here, Jim? Draw to the side rail and back out again? played and Marley up yet to get going oh mate surging ahead and as you said looking very very calm in control 
Yeah, they always say the secret of success in this game is to play like it means nothing when it means everything. Oh, a yeah. phrase Jimmy White told me many, many years ago. But a 2 nothing advantage for Ru Ruble in the mitt. Yeah, this brings you some scores from earlier on, guys. Kelly Fisher went through against Elise Kiu. Savannah Easton went through as well. Two sets to zero. Christina to catch off to a flyer in this Madaya light. Puerto Rico open as well, going through in straight sets. And Nicole Keeney beating Stephanie Mitchell 2-1. And Skylar Hess, great player, great local player. Well, I say local from, from the States, of course. Went through against Lan uh, Lorraine Chanel in straight sets. And we have six matches every single day for you for the next eight days. Yeah, that's what we were saying. We've got the ladies playing here. We're gonna have the juniors and then the World Eight Ball Championship to close everything out here in San Juan. Just, uh, it's a pool playing banquet really, isn't it? Oh, it is, it's a feast on the felt. Feast on the felt. <laughs> So rack number three, sticking with that break. It's been working so far. Hasn't made the one. Made a ball though. I think it was the two dropped in the side and a one eight combo to start. So things looking good, Jim. And fully deserving too. You know, she's looked the better player at the table. She's breaking well. And when the balls are there, she's taking them. Now, the only difficulty here is the one's going to be going away from that corner pocket. So if she plays this, she's having a look, see if it even passes the eight. Yeah, I was going to say, does it go off the eight? She's, I think she's playing it off the eight, is she? Well, we would take the cue ball down towards the three. That'd be the next ball on. No, she's playing the combo. Yeah, that was the problem, Jim, wasn't it? But a nice, easy hook here just does that one ball slide past that seven oh no it doesn't does it not unless she can come and with the old shrinking ball shot mark <laughs> yeah it doesn't pass it does it no i think she's looking at a, a thin hit on the one maybe spinning it playing the one into the seven keeping the one in that area and maybe spinning it using the five as cover well that's exactly what she's done yeah i think there's a is there an edge there though to swing the cue ball around three rails down behind the 310 There is an edge there, I think. I'd play that, Jim. That's why I'm sat here. And Rubelin has bought herself another chance. Yeah, things not happening at the moment for Amalia. Predator sponsored player. Gives us a chance to thank our other sponsors as well, of course, with Dialyte, our main sponsor, Alpha Coin. If you're looking to invest a bit of cryptocurrency, Jim. Oh, that was a nice little nudge on that seven. Look, let's open that up and left a perfect on the three. Yes, it has. Couldn't really have worked out a lot better. One good shot from the three to the four, and she'll have done all the hard work in this one. Digging down. There you saw a flicker rise from the cue ball to the object ball, Jim. Are you a, a, an object ball watcher on the final stroke? Please say yes. You should be. You should be, of course you should. I'm glad you said that. We would have fallen out on day one. Well, your eyes, your eyes go back and forth and that slight pause in your backstroke allows your eyes to go back to the object ball, which is the last ball you should be looking at when you deliver the cue. Absolutely perfectly said. 
Ooh, getting a little bit close to that side pocket there. Catching the point. Floating a little bit there, Jim. Yeah, she was a little closer to that side pocket. Her heart skipped a beat, but... Minded as well on the replay. I thought he might drop the second time round. <laughs> just where you want them. Yeah, it seems every time that Rublin has had the chance, she's taken it home. Her safety play has been good. You can see what her cue ball control has been like. Yeah, she's got it, as they say, on a string at the moment. And that's the reason she's 3 nothing in front. It's a race to four, two out of three sets. And she is in total command here in our opener. 3-0. Yeah, Pia Filler is in action at the moment on one of our outer tables. And she's 3-2 down in the first set to Susan Williams. And Wei Ju Chen, Wei Wei, is on her way to the first set. 3-0 up on the hill against Alexandra Andres. If you need to know any of the scores, guys, you can go to Pro Billiard Series dot com there's everything you need to know on there the brackets who's playing who what time they're playing all the prize money all the upcoming events everything you need to know jim and if you want to keep your eye on any other the, of the tables guys we've got 20 tables in action go to kazoom.com it's totally free everything's free this week we're giving it away you are like an encyclopedia of information. <laughs> oh, I, I'm just because I can read. <laughs> oh, one ball got kicked. It was on its way, but didn't drop. It's dry. Yeah, the first dry break of the match from Rubelin, and she'll sit in her chair. She grabs her playing cue, so she's assuming she's going to be back pretty soon. So do you miss playing, Jim? I know you're a, a businessman these days and you've got a, a really nice s uh, snooker and pool hall in, where is it? It's in Toronto, in the northeast end of the city of Toronto. And yeah, it's, uh, it's a lot of fun. Club called the Corner Bank, if you're ever up that way, come in and pay us a visit. And uh, I do sometimes miss playing, Mark, but when I see all these good young players, they're so much better than we were and so much younger. Yeah, it's a young person's game these days. I mean, okay, you've still got the, the odd ones that are still up there, like Kelly Fisher, Alison Fisher, of course, both in this tournament. Still on top form, Jasmine Ocean. Yeah, a few more names that I'm familiar with. Don't get a chance to see Alison or Kelly that often anymore, but uh, good friends and be nice to see them. Yeah, Jasmine will be on one of the stream tables at 5 p.m. Actually, I believe I'm doing that match with Jasmine, too. So it's been a long time since I've done one of her matches. As I said, the names have changed so much. I've been away from live commentary for, well, since pre-COVID, about two and a half years. The last event I did was in Las Vegas at the Rio for Predator and CSI and you know, I feel like it's been closer to five years since I've been out of the game. So much has changed. Oh, nice combo there. Controlled the three well as well. Yeah, that was the key to that shot, Mark. It wasn't as much the combo, but the speed that she played it to allow that three to track down towards the corner pocket. And the four right there, this is a guilt-edged opportunity right now for Amelia. And at three nothing, she's got to take this. Well, they're there for the taking. Okay, position from the four to the five and five to the six, of course, is the the main shots in this particular run out. We 
mentioned the Spaniards. There's a few great Spaniards here. You mentioned the men, Francisco Sanchez Ruiz, David Alcady, both in the Moscone Cup, Jim. And of course, uh, there's Jonas uh, Suto Comino as well, another young player coming through. And then you've got Mighty Repero on the women's side. Salada, a new one, playing her first women's Pro Billiard Series event. A little surprised the way that Amelia decided to play this. She's left herself now the bank on the six. It looked like she had the angle. She could have floated that cue ball over. I know it's a very acute angle to make that six into the side, but it looked on to me. Oh, this is wide, is it? No, it's okay. Well, she's left herself more to do, though, on this seven than she would have liked. Bit closer to the rail, Jim. Yeah, again, good shot on the six, but oh. this is a nervy one. This one, this is that's the right word, nervy one. Well, oh, played never it touched the cushion. She knows what she's doing. What do we know? As long as one of us does. <laughs> yeah. Oh, what a great shot that was on the seven. Frightening, isn't it? I like just stunning this through. Yeah, I like that shot, the, the stun follow rather than rolling it in. It's always nice to get the cue tip through the ball, Jim. Yeah, and also very noticeable. She gets her head over the cue. She's right eye dominant, so she has to move her head to get that right eye over the shaft. So she's striking the center of the cue ball when she needs to. Brilliantly played. Boy, that was some kind of effort getting out from there. And that was far from easy. And 3-1 the score. So Amelia, well, she's given us a little indication of what she's capable of, but what a strike that was on the seven. Yeah, even back to the three ball as well, the three eight. As you said, the three eight was easy, but it was controlling that three, and she did it to perfection as well. So that will give her a lot of confidence. She looked a little bit nervy before, but that will settle her down a bit, and it's given something for that young lady to think about as she sits in her chair. Well, you remember what I said at the outset after the break? She sat down and grabbed her playing cue, assuming she was going to be coming to the table. She didn't get back to the table. And she's still got her playing cue in hand. And I wonder if that doesn't give Amelia a little bit more impetus yeah, I wouldn't to keep bother. her parked in her chair. I wouldn't worry about ch chalking it just yet, Rubelin. Let's see how this break goes first for the Spaniard. Chance to get another one back. Armit, though, is still on the hill. It's all about this break. Nice shot, made the one, made the eight. Now then, how's the two looking? Not very good. Well, she's in close proximity to the two. First order of business, getting that ball off the break. But it's gonna be nothing but defense here, Mark. How'd you like playing this one? Yeah, she's looking, she can roll that cue ball right in behind the nine and the three. Play the two into the 10. Got a few options actually. She could play the two into that yeah. area. That's what she's doing. She's just going to really play the two there. bury Rubelin here. Oh, she's well short of speed. Well, that was not a difficult safety, but she'd like to have that one over again. Yeah, played it a little bit quick, I thought. She took her time thinking about it. When she got down to actually play it, she played it quite quickly. Oh, she had so many options. She should have really locked Rubelin up with that, with that safety and coming to the table with a clear path to the two. That's a let off. Well, Pia Filler has actually lost the first set against Susan Williams, 4-2. So I wouldn't call it a shock, but Unexpected, shall we say. Pia going through quite a good bit of form at the moment. Had a good result in Europe recently. Won her first Euro title. You 
you've enjoyed yourself here in San Juan. You were here a few days before me, and uh, I mean, you do everything here, Mark. You, you don't just help us out with your expert analysis in the commentary box, but you, uh, you I come in, you're helping them set up with the tables, you're moving carpet around. I'm thinking, this guy's oh, a don't star. Don't mention carpet. <laughs> I've moved it a little bit more than I would have liked to have done yesterday. Wow. But yeah, lots of people do a lot of great stuff to get these venues ready to look as good as they do. And that also speaks volumes about um, how much respect you garner here from everybody. Because I don't think I've ever seen so many people come up to you. We're walking around and everybody knows you and you've got time for everybody, Mark. Yeah, I, I think it's... Uh, I just think it's part of being around the sport, Jim. You know, I, I love it, as you know. I think one of the first things you said when we first met yesterday that you can tell I'm a very passionate person, and I think that's what gets me through, you yeah. know? Just look at your email. Yeah. I, I can't give that out to the people, otherwise you get barraged, <laughs> but your email says it all. Yeah. Oh, she's made it. What a shot. Brilliant shot. What a shot. Oh, she didn't call it. Did she call it? She called it. Yeah, of course she called it. Uh, she's getting the balls up. Yep. I didn't see her go to the pocket with her cue. I mean, we were chatting, but uh, what a shot from distance. And that was far from set. This is some kind of comeback. Well, and that's what she needed as well, wasn't it? Three... Zero down, three two now, and she's breaking and to breaking. go hill hill. Yeah, a good break, and tell you what, the pressure switches back over to Rubelin. She didn't look like she was being threatened. It was clear sailing. Well, I think I'm right in saying this is your first pro billiard series event that you've actually commentated on with this format. And one thing we've noticed here, Jim, is. These short races can change so quickly. You know, all of a sudden you think, oh, someone's on the hill and they're going to go and run out and then it's one set and then they come back, win the second set. No, it's rarely like that, you know. Probably not what the players would want, but I can tell you from a fan's perspective, the pressure, it's, it's constant. And, I, and you don't think that all the fans at home watching are sitting back praying for these shootouts. And I've never seen one. I've heard lots about them, but I know, well, I'm, I've been told by everybody that it's only a matter of time. Oh, you'll be seeing them. Don't worry about that. And you'll see also when the crowds, when they, as soon as a shootout, as soon as it becomes apparent around the room, the crowds just all gather around. And we've seen some great ones. So a great one in Ohio, our highest one of we've ever had, 15-14. It was young Justin Martin against Jan van R uh, Lierop, 15-14. And that takes some doing. Just going to be a push out here from Rublin. Completely locked up after the break, so just push out. You just want to push out into an area where you don't feel your opponent can play a good attacking safety. And you're certainly not leaving them a shot where they can get aggressive. So I wouldn't be surprised if Amelia brings her right back out of her chair. You might notice there that she's actually got her own bridge that she takes with her. Same as Kelly Fisher and Alison Fisher. They've both got them coming from snooker backgrounds, of course. They prefer the crosshead, and we were talking about that earlier, weren't we? I seem to remember. Well, apparently she sees something she likes. Is she, is she seeing the, the six ball? Is she thinking of the six ball? The, the one, two, six? No, surely not. No, just a safety. Not too bad. She hasn't left Rubelin with anything from which Rubelin can attack, and that was the first order of business. Yeah, Malia, her whole persona has completely changed in this first set. She was looking a little bit dejected. 
She's got the bit between her teeth now, though. She sees a chance to win this first set. And again, where that cue ball was situated, she couldn't cue into the right-hand side of that white to be able to spin it and run for cover. And so she's left Amelia with another chance to play a good attacking safety. A little bit careless there. Had plenty of room to get past that nine ball. Didn't really need to go into it. Now a chance here, I think. Yeah, look, she's just looking. Can she draw off this one ball? Calling for the extension. 30-second shot clock being employed here in San Juan. Now she can get through to this one straight through it. She looked at possibly playing a, a shot cushion first to kind of stick and kick as Marcus Schumat called in uh, one of the matches I did earlier with him. I like that phrase. I'll be using that again, oh, Mark. Oh, the kick and stick. Yeah, that's, that's quite a popular shot now. It's like the new generation using the kick and stick. She's called the bank. Played with the modicum of safety in mind. She drew that cue ball behind the two, so Rublin will be kicking at this one. But will she be sticking? Well, there's going to be a there. few balls moving, that's for sure. Oh, judged and that beautifully. That? Well, nice wow. little bit of a run there. She'll be happy with that as she goes back to her seat. Yeah, she's judged this one very nicely. Yeah, as played, she always knew that she was going to get a little bit of separation. Yeah, as nice a shot as Amelia played. Now she's in big trouble. And the balls are open, so it's important she hits this one. The last thing she can afford is cue ball in hand when her opponent's on the hill. There's all, all possibilities here as well, though. There's scratches, there's all sorts can happen. You can scratch off this in the side. If she's coming to rouse Jim, come across it. You can easily slide off that into the side pocket. She's missed it altogether. So a real chance now to take the first set for the Filipino. Well, everything's there. Cue ball control and execution. Narrowly missing that one. As you said, though, Mark, if she'd have hit that side of the one, that cue ball was going to be headed towards the side. Well, Rublin's seen a little bit of a fight back from Amelia, so she'd like to put this first set in the bank as I'm quickly as possible. Yeah, I'm little. surprised she played it like that, to be honest. She could have put the cue ball anywhere on the table, ball in hand she had there. And she's just has gone just a little bit awkward. Needs to be careful here, Jim. Yeah, couldn't do much. Is she on it? I don't think she's on this, you know. I don't think she's gone through far enough. Well, the shake of the head kind of confirms that. Yeah, it's a bit of a bit of a careless shot. Or can she see it? No, she can't see the potting angle on that. So that's a big, big chance gone. This set is changing around. She'll be going all out for this. Well, the good news is that cue ball is going to be heading right over towards the four. So just focus on the pot. And the natural angle is there. Oh, she's 
Geordie. Just overcut it slightly. And she knows that might be the last shot she plays in this set. One good positional effort from Rubelin. As we see that miss again. Overcut it. And she was nicely on the four too. Well, that's, can she see the three? I don't think she can. Is she going round first here? Oh no, she could see it. Hasn't really played much of a shot though. Don't think there's much she could have done there. She could only see the thick side of it, Jim. Yeah, no, she, uh, she tried to cheat the pocket. Thin clip here for a safety. And she's gonna try and find cover. I don't think she's quite hard enough. Bit of a let off that one from Amelia after misjudging that three ball. Quite happy to get back to the table so soon. Yeah, I'm sure she thought that was the first set gone. she been lucky again. Now this might not be too bad. No, bangs the cue on the floor. She well, she's she's left it, Jim. She has left it. Looked like that four might be close enough to that side cushion, not be available in the side pocket, but I think it is. Well, it's definitely available. Yeah, she knew it when she had a look. Now can Rubelin take this one across the finish line? take a monumental mistake not to take these last five balls yeah, nine to the ten really is the only place this can go wrong I think and she's perfect on this seven well Little bit of a shake of the head as well. Yeah, she's just off angle on this. I'm surprised she went through. All she had to do was stop that one dead. She yeah. would have been perfect. She could have drawn back, played the nine in the same pocket. Now she's just slightly off angle. And she's having a look to see what she can do to the side pocket with a nine. Well, I don't really like that option. I think she needs to little, try and force this around yeah, a couple little, of rails. A little careless there. Well, it's got to be a lot easier than it looks from our overhead perspective, I'll tell you that much. Unless you're going to play this into the corner, which I think she's got no option. Corner pocket, it has to be. Oh, what a great recovery. Shot. What a recovery. So it will be then the first set to the Filipino after, well, a couple of little hiccups, Jim, along the way. Well, she was being threatened by Amelia and she answered the bell. 4-2, she secures set number one. Rubelin, a bit, set number one over Amelia Matas. Yeah, and you what can't say she didn't have her chances, Jim. Great shot on that nine though. Yeah, she took her medicine, as they say. She didn't get nicely on the eight, but didn't let it worry her. Got down, and as you say, knocked a beautiful nine in down the rail. Perfect on the 10, one set to zero. Did you get a chance to uh, to try one of our sponsored beers yet? I've, I've tried a few, Jim. Let's say that. I've been here three weeks, so um, yes, I've tried the odd Medea light. And it's uh, it's one of them it's one of them drinks that's nice, you know, it's it's not too strong. Easy drinking beer. Easy, easy drinking, especially in this heat. It's a, it's a good beer for the Puerto Rico, let's just say that. Yeah, and they are, of course, our main sponsors for this event and the men's event, both running alongside each other at the same time. The Island Life. 
It's calling. Great place to holiday. I can yeah. tell you I will be back here, whether it's back here commentating, and uh, I've been sending photos to all my friends, my, my two daughters. So it won't be long before I'm going to be back here enjoying the hospitality of this beautiful country and this city. Yeah, it really does have everything. Great food as well, great climate. Beautiful beaches, fantastic people, very friendly people. It's all laid back. Manana, manana. Well, she made the one, but you can see no clear path to the two, so just the push. Well, she's kicked. Well, I can only assume she was kicking at that too. And apparently she was just trying to flick it and well, it looked like she missed it by half a ball at least half a ball not too sure exactly what Amelia was thinking there because she could have pushed obviously the two near the pocket makes things a little tougher but an error in judgment sometimes nerves manifest themselves in different ways it isn't always a missed shot sometimes it can just be a lapse in judgment. Never our job to try and second guess what they're doing out there because we're a long ways away. You don't miss many shots from the commentary box. I've never missed one, Jim. That's why I gave up playing. Talking about missing shots, you guys at home never have to miss a shot because you can go to kazoom.com and choose which table you want to watch. You've got a choice of 20. Did I just make you smile, Jim? <laughs> I've got a feeling you're going to be making me smile a lot this week. <laughs> hopefully, hopefully we're going to get the guys watching on YouTube and Facebook smiling as well. We're here for fun, guys. If you want to send us some messages, we might not see them as we go along, but we'll certainly respond to any that you send us. Send us a friend request on Facebook. I'll make way for you. Oh, nice little nudge there. Confident little nudge, Jim. There's a little bit of a snooker shot there. She's just played there. She's looked just marginally the better player for me. I think that uh, Amelia's safety game has deserted her somewhat because she's had opportunities to put Rublin in a lot of trouble and hasn't. Yeah, I, th I think, you know, I often like to treat safeties as, as going for a pot. You know, you've still got to be very, very accurate and you need to get your pace right as well. And it's almost like you're playing a pot into a different part of the table but still controlling that cue ball as well. And it's that seems to have been lacking just slightly, which has left Rublin the great chances that she's left her. Exactly right. And certainly looking in control, and she's gaining in confidence with every one of those mistakes. I've been particularly impressed with how well Rublin has controlled the speed of the table because it's a new cloth. These tables just set up last night as she knocks that 10 in to secure the opening rack here in the second set. She's already secured the first one. But, I mean, she's when she's had her opportunities, she's taken them across the finish line. And she's got Amelia under a bit of pressure now. Another veteran who we, you know, she is a veteran now, of course, Jennifer Beretta. Nine millimeter has done so much in the game over the years, along with the Black Widow. Of course, Jeanette Lee. Hope you're doing okay, Jeanette. I know she's still out playing occasionally. Jennifer, two one down in the first set against Nina Torvund. Yeah, we do send our best wishes out to Jeanette and uh you know, a very dear old friend of mine. I rarely see her, but I've uh, got a lot of fond memories with Jeanette. And um, uh, wishing her well, sending a lot of positive thoughts and prayers and just hoping she's doing well. 
the game needs the Black Widow. Yeah, we need characters, don't we? She certainly was a character changed. Changed pool, I suppose you could say, for, for women. Arm it. Breaking off then. Look at the little pinky sticking up in the air. Look, do you see that, Jim? Remember the great Tony Mio? He used to tap his middle finger on the table all the time, didn't he? Do you remember that? Yeah, a lot of snooker players used to just almost to relax that bridge hand. Settle the nerves in their cueing hand and uh, a successful break. And a look at the two. Outside chance here. So we haven't seen a break and finish yet in this match. That's all you're looking for, isn't it, Jim? On the break, make a ball and give yourself a look at the next ball on. And this looks very, very good. Play this in the corner. Little stun off the side rail. Four waiting. Just a little trace of right hand English. Right hand side on this just to swing it past the five ball. The yeah, five it doesn't the want to contact the five. Oh, she just did, but got away with it. Get off that rail, though. Ooh, this has changed that whole shot, just touching that five, isn't it? Just means she can't get close to the six now, so she's got to dial eight long distance on this six. Yeah, I like just dropping this in and leaving this near the side rail, Jim, here. No pace at all on this. Oh, she's gone the other way. Okay, played it very nicely. Confidently played it off the rail. Yeah, that did show a lot of confidence when you're not afraid to move that cue ball around. And she kept it away from the cushion too, which helps her cause. That was about as close to the six as she was gonna get from that five and I was talking about a break and finish. Well, she's favorite now. Yeah, just going to screw the extension on the end of the cue to draw this cue ball back for the eight. And she's not very tall. Well, neither of them are. Fluent little well, stroke that was there. A long bridge and nicely controlled again, the cue ball. Lots of players now don't really grow up using the bridge very much, do they? They don't really learn to use it. It's all about extensions these days. No, without a doubt, Mark, if there is an Achilles heel with a lot of top pool players, it's being able to play with the bridge. I mean, I've seen great players look look weak yeah. using the bridge. So Very awkward they look, I think, a lot of them. Maybe we should start giving some rest lessons, some bridge lessons to some pool players. Just need Jim. to play a bit more snooker on the bigger surface. You'll learn how to use that bridge. Yeah. Jimmy White, of course, one of your good friends I know, has visited your your snooker hall and pool hall there in the corner bank. The in corner bank. Toronto. And Jimmy, one of the best rest players that I've ever seen, yeah. maybe that's ever lived. Totally agree with that. And no one could use it like him. Two nothing, Rubel and Amit. Again, getting set to break in rack number three. I'm guessing this is the first time you've seen the new aero rack as well from Predator Jim. It's a very slim line, isn't it? It looks almost like Formula One-ish. It's a very cool looking rack and uh, maybe ordering a few of those for the club back in Toronto because they look they look like they're tailor-made, not only for professional use, but for commercial use too. Yep, available in white or black, $99. I'm sure we can figure out a little bit of a discount Try for you. Try and get you. the wholesale price, if you wouldn't mind, Mark. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll have a word with Karim. There you see the Predator lights, look, the arena lights, beautiful. They've really changed the sport as well. 
The lighting, Jim, is so much better now. Here we go then, looking to go on the hill, arm it breaking off. I didn't really move that much. Yeah, it's dry. Didn't really hit them well, Jim. No, not the sort of contact she was looking for. But she hasn't left anything on the one. So really just the push out you feel from Amelia here. Just a question of where she wants to take that white. Yeah, she's got 60 seconds to think about it. After the break, you get 60 seconds instead of the, the normal 30. And also after a push out, you get 60 seconds as well. And the great Jeremy Jones always says, use them 60 seconds, even if it's not thinking about the next shot. Think about the plan, you know, for the for the rack going forward as well. You never get time back. Always use it. Sage advice. cover talking about Jeremy Jones very quickly there Moscone coming up is the next big tournament after our eight days here who's favorites to win this year do you think Jim you've done lots of commentary of course on Moscone cups in the past I used to get asked that every single year I think you've got to tip Europe um, I think it'll be close. I say that every year almost, but um, Europe look like I, I know Europe's going to be favored on paper. It really depends on uh, on how Strickland plays. I think he's a bit a bit of the wild card for me on a Team wild, USA. A wild wild card, <laughs> I would say. But um, Earl can he can lift a team on his own or destroy one on his own. <laughs> I think is what you might be thinking. Well, he is one of the all-time greats. And, and, you know, a good friend of mine. And I hope he performs to his capability because that's going to keep it real close. Well, I must say, last year I was at the Moscone Cup at Ali Pali in London. And I was absolutely gutted when he wasn't going to be part of the team because he was one of the main reasons I wanted to go. I'd never seen him play live. And he really is a great character to have around the, the venues. You never know what you might get. Is it a little bit like a box of chocolates? You never know <laughs> what you're going to get. Well, there's <laughs> little doubt you're going to see the Pearl playing in a few of these events in the not too distant future. You're not going to keep him away from these high profile events that Predator and CSI are putting together. Yeah, the money grows as well. Great time to be a player. Now she's gonna be jumping at this. Going back for the short cue. And she's gonna have to elevate. She's not very tall, so that makes jumping a little tougher. Don't know that she's called any shot, a referee. Yeah, she's Standing decided. Watching. She's changed her mind. She's decided to kick at this now because she couldn't quite get comfortably at the cue ball. Like I said, she's not very tall. Oh, what a nice little hit that is. Oh, you can say that again. Tell well, you what, what a nice little hit that is. You, uh, you, can <laughs> <laughs> you can bottle up these kind of shots from being full ball snookered and I'll, I'll tell you what you can sell them all over the world in just about every billiard room you can think of what a shot that was by Ruben and Amet yeah. as good as it gets extension called just have a little and I think that's what she needs to do here just have a little bit of a thing and she's called her extension but not used much of it much of it 
See, and again, Jim, that's not good enough at this level, you know. Okay, she's got left awkward, Kirin, for Rublin, but a full ball hit at this again. This is a little bit easier with her being right-handed, believe it or not, because she can use the rail to elevate. The left-hander, this would be a little tougher shot if it was Amelia playing it. I didn't say it was easy, I just said easier. Yeah, got away with it. Amalia there, so come on Amalia. I want to see this go to a shootout. I want to see Jim White experience a shootout. I want to be the first one to do a commentary with him. You see me get excited, more excited than I already get. See Careless once again on the safety. We're back to square one, Jim. Look. <laughs> That's where we were a few shots ago with the, the one and the five together like that. There's something going on between them two balls. I'm not sure that she's covered the space. It looks, yeah, well, you can look at it now, our camera angle right down the line. And again, a huge let off from Amelia. Well, she went for distance there made a ball given the option now to Amalia she won't be giving this back though another situation like the last she's got to put Rublin in trouble here yeah just slide that one ball onto the side rail behind the three take the cue ball over behind the two, she's given it back to her. Well, that surprises me. Yeah, that makes two of us. I think Rubelin might take her back to school here, Mark. But I'd be, I'd be very surprised if Rubelin doesn't put her in trouble. Because she's got a couple options to do it. Yeah, there's one of them. I'm very, very surprised that Amelia didn't play that shot. at the jump do you think players these days go for the jump cue a little bit too quickly and the, you know they make some fantastic cues now where you know anyone can jump really with them I know you still have to be accurate gotta keep the cue ball stuff. on the table I was gonna say the tough part here is keeping that white on the playing surface Sorry, Mark, I, no, I didn't want to avoid you, your question. I just wanted to get that in because that was always going to be the danger if she struck that side of the one. Yeah. But um, in answer to your question, I've seen players that are so adept with the jump cue now. And case in point, the last match I did on this table, even though he lost, Marco Teutcher, was unbelievable some of the shots that he played. Terrific shot, shots of the match, even though he lost it. But he was brilliant with the jump cue. Yeah, there's some great players now. Wow. Yeah, you know what? She was so, so minded on loosening up the seven and the nine. She tried to create an angle that wasn't there on the two. She forced it to try and put some distance between the, the seven and the nine, open them up. She was thinking clearance and took her mind off the pot. Yeah, amazing how many times you see players try to create an angle that just isn't there. You think, oh, I can do it. I'll get there. The angle's there for a reason. It's the correct angle, which allows the ball to go in the pocket. Yeah, that was a nice shot into a blind pocket where her line of sight was looking away from the intended target. So still got a couple good shots she's got to come with, though. No, and she, she needs that cue ball to slow six. down, and it did. Yeah, needs to use the back rail here, bounce back up for the five, probably into the same pocket.
that was a nice stroke. Probably end up paying the 6 9, will she, off this? Well, I'm not sure that she didn't necessarily intend the 6-9, just overdrew it and just got the 6 into the corner, which absolutely works. Yeah, I like that even better, actually. You haven't got to worry about controlling the 6-ball off the 9, so this is a good opportunity now. That's what she done in the first set. Exactly the same kind of pattern, although she went 3-0 down, didn't she? Came back to 3-2 in that one and ended up losing it 4-2. Yeah, she was really stretching, stretching on that. Too far away from the cue ball yeah, there, Jim. You could see the long bridge and you just your cueing action, it's just not as as smooth as it is when your bridge hands a lot closer. It's almost like you're throwing the cue at the shot instead of stroking it. Yeah, and good, she's good you know, got a lot of concern on her face, and rightfully so. This is very likely going to cost her the third rack. Yeah. She had done all the hard work there, Mark. And it always hurts a little bit more, doesn't it, when you do all the hard work and leave your opponent last three balls over the holes just begging to be potted she's going to go on the hill here well three nothing ruble in the mitt a command performance this is when we started to see the fight back from amelia in the first set you wonder if that fight back's gonna manifest itself here as well because she has had a few chances she's let astray Another great battle I've just noticed on table nine. Christina Zlatova, great player from Bulgaria. Another left-hander, Jim. Very, very talented. Playing another young, talented player. Bojana Sarac. And Christina just got the edge in that one. 3-2. So there's lots of action going on around. Pia Phillips is 3-0 up having lost the first set against Susan Williams and the action just keeps on coming guys all day long every day for the next six days sorry eight days I should say I've lost a couple of days there Jim for some they're reason they're not letting us out of town early Mark no, no, morning no. you know I don't want to go early Yeah, coming up next on this particular table. Monica Webb against Elul Kibaroglu. That's another great match between the Turk and the American. And on table one, how about this? Ko Pinyi versus Dennis Grabe. On table one. So here we go. The break-off makes the one. Now then, look at this. Shot on the two. Yeah, she actually had a shot on the two briefly until... Oh, the ten come and sport it, and then and the, five the five came over and took the clear path away. Now, do you can you bank this across, Jim? I know it's hard to reach. Could you tough, avoid the ten? Tough to see how much of the two she can get through to. But she's having a look at it. This is a one pocket shot. Out comes the bridge. There goes the, the head. Puts it on the break cue, I think. Yeah. Using it on the high part of it. We call that the spider in snooker. Maybe the 10. Oh, oh. she was eyeing up the 10. The thin clip on the two to try and flick that 10 into the corner for the win.
Didn't miss it by much. Yeah, Rublin had quite a hiatus away from the game. As I know you've had, Jim, but how does it feel to be back? Yeah, great. You know, never the same doing events remotely. I had done a, a few events for the UK remotely, and boy, that one never threatened the corner. Amelia, well, she's going to have to hit the practice table after this one to try and get a little of her confidence back, but it's just great being, being back to a, a live event at the venue, and especially one like this, as nice as any I've seen. There's nothing like actually being in the room, is there? I mean, I did lots of ro remote stuff during COVID and stuff, but I refuse to do them now as much as possible. I'd much rather just go to the, the venue. I think you can add so much more value being at the venue. Ten ball, and she called it for it's the in. win. There it is. What a shot. Off the knot, the ball, ten ball in. Rublin Amit, 4-0, secures the second set and with it the match. Two sets to love. Boy, you gotta tip your hat, what a shot. A lot of creativity from this Filipino superstar. Rublin Amit through. Yeah, fabulous match for Rublin. Here we have another look at it. Look at this. She called it as well, played it off. The, that's one of those shots you can scratch off the back of, isn't it, when you play the two-railer? So very, very good thinking, clear thinking there by the Filipino. Great result there. Amalia, as you say, has got to go and hit the practice table because she's gone to the one-loss side. It is double elimination. We'll be back with our next match, guys, at 2 p.m. Jim White, it's been a pleasure. I've been Mark White, and I'll still be Mark White on the next one as well. Cheers, Mark. Will you Mark. still be Jim White? Only if you're beside me, mate. See ya.